Good morning, everybody. My name is Gadara Gonzalez, Path with Art Program Director. Welcome to Art Transforms Us. Today, we're excited to explore poetry with poet laureate Raul Sanchez and Path with Art poet Pam Winter. Before we move forward, I would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the indigenous people whose lands we inhabit, and we invite you to do the same. Here in Seattle, we honor the Coast Salish people and the Duwamish people. At Path with Art, we provide art engagement opportunities for people recovering from poverty, domestic violence, homelessness, substance abuse, and other trauma. We believe in the power of art and creativity to heal oneself, to build bridges to community, and to navigate a path to stability. During the pandemic, we have transformed all our classes to online to continue to provide support to our community. We invite you to help us keep these programs running by giving to our spring fundraising campaign by clicking the link below or by visiting our website, pathwithart.org. And today I'm thrilled to have Raul Sanchez here with us. Raul is the newest City of Redmond Poet Laureate, Path With Art Teaching Artist, and his book, All Our Brown Skin Angels, was nominated for a Washington State Book Award. Raul also worked with Path With Art, leading a fantastic poetry workshop in Spanish at Casa Latina, one of our 45 social worker, social service partners. Raul, bienvenido, buenos dias. Buenos dias, welcome. Good morning, everyone, hi. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us, Raul, and thank you for sharing the power of poetry with the community. My absolute pleasure. That's fantastic. Thank you. We're very proud of what you're doing with our community. Um, Raul, I would like to know, how did poetry become part of your life? Can you tell me a little bit of your story? Sure, I'll give you a brief uh, synopsis of that. Um, when I was growing up in Mexico City, my father owned a restaurant near the Bullfights Arena. And one of the customers that frequented his restaurant was Don Renato Leduc, who was a journal, a political journalist, essayist, novelist, and a poet as well. Of course, at age five, I didn't know what that was. But every now and then, he would stand up in the middle of the restaurant and start reciting his poetry. Everybody kept silence. When he got done, everybody clapped. And I remember this man as a something, somebody very tall and very uh, handsome and, and uh, you know, fornido. Uh, because when you're a kid, everything seems to be distant and far away and long. Um, it wasn't until I moved to the States when I learned more about him. And that, that was after I got involved with a group of Los Norteños, a Latino writers group. And I started uh, getting serious about the act uh, of, of writing and being, being a poet and reading and particip participating in uh, open mics and workshops. That was the genesis of how I got to where I am now. It's a powerful story. That's fantastic. You were very lucky to make this amazing poet. So it took me a while to make the connection. <laughs> so Raul, how do you think that poetry helps people recovering from trauma? Do you really believe that poetry transforms us? Absolutely. My experience uh, lately since I retired, I've been uh, volunteering for the um, uh, Pongo teen writing uh, group at the juvenile detention center. And I have learned a lot of techniques that uh, we have used with uh, teenagers in, uh, in detention. And what that does to us is we go in with an open heart and with our open ears to listen to them, to all the traumatic stories that they have from abuse or um, uh, mistreatment, homelessness. Uh, uh, being in jail is the worst thing that could happen. But when we go in there, we sit down with them and then we start to write about whatever may be in their minds. But we have different processes, different methods. But the best reward is to see that the kids, they get they gain confidence in, in an adult that has no connection with them. And we, like I said, we go in there with an open heart and an open mind, and they share with us their very intimate, um, um, not necessarily secrets, but parts of the life. When we write about it, I tell them that this is like taking our memories from our heart and our memory, and we're gonna use those, and you're gonna feel them running through your through their body all the way in down to their arm, and then down to the tip of the pencil or pen, and I call that bleeding on the paper, which means we're extracting that thing that is traumatic for us so that we can deal with it and see it and eventually 
those writings could probably help somebody else along the along the way. At Casa Latina was an incredible experience in there because I worked with uh, domestic workers, all female workers, and um, we read stories and poems. And we had a discussion, and yes, there were tears between the lines, and that that was awesome. For me, the best reward is when I help uh, teach the kids or the uh, adults, and at the end of the writing, we I asked them, how did that make you feel? Do you want to write in more about it? And they say, yeah, I ask, did you like what you wrote? And they say, yes, if they smile, to me, that's the best uh, prize that I can get from what, when, what, from what I had done with them. You know, they're still talking about that workshop, Raul. That was a very powerful workshop to the ladies at Casa Latina, Women's Without Borders. Yeah, so we use, uh, is, go ahead. No, go ahead, tell me. No, I was gonna say that um, uh, it is uh, through the process of the writing, it's, it's called expressive writing. And also we associate the images that we that come with it because those are still embedded in their in their minds and in their hearts. And really what we need to do to be able to get to that point is just to listen to our minds and hearts to be able to, to write about that, our own personal experiences. Because we are the only witnesses of our times. Look at look around us nowadays, everything is terrible. Absolutely. Thank you, Raul, for sharing those stories. We also would like to welcome today Pathway Dodge poet Pam Winter. Pam joined us last week, but we have technical issues like everybody else is having right now. So um, I hope that Pam is joining us right now. Welcome, Pam. So nice to see you. Yay, you're here. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Gadra. Hi, Raul. Hi, Pam. Nice to see you. So right now, Raul is going to lead us and a, a lesson in poetry. And later, Pam is gonna join us to talk about her own writing practice, and she's gonna share some of the poems with us. And if you have any questions for Raul or Pam, feel free to write those questions in the chat. And I think that I'm ready. We're ready to start writing. So let's start it. I see you later. Okay. All right, well, welcome to uh, Path with Art. Uh, Art transforms us. And we're gonna talk a little bit about um, uh, poetry that has to do with images or sensorial poetry. As you know, we all have five senses. And out of the five senses, the most important one sometimes is our ears and our eyes. Sometimes we remember what we have tasted or maybe smell. But nowadays, our biggest organ is our skin. And we're all missing that embrace, right? That warm embrace or warm handshake. But now we're missing that. So that's one of the aspects of our senses that we don't, we, we cannot, use right now because we are isolated in quarantine. So we can write about that too. I suggest that as, as I move along in my explanation here, my presentation, that uh, take the time to write a few of the words down, maybe some ideas that I may be touching, that may touch you as well, so that uh, we can start creating a list of the senses and associating the different activities or memories associated to either our sense of hearing, uh, smell or taste, tact or our sight because we all have those within us. Out of the four senses, as I was saying, uh, we all have experiences with voices and sounds, uh, some uh, spicy foods, etc., that um, bring us back to that time and place. For example, in my case, since I grew up in a restaurant with my mother and father in Mexico City, I always remember the smell of the, of the food that they were cooking for the customers. So that was a trigger point for me. So I can elaborate and write about the restaurant and the foods that I remember. There are other things that I have heard through my ears, whether it have been complimentary, maybe some truths, so maybe some lies, so maybe some stuff that was unpleasant, maybe something that was um, uh, very rewarding to me. And I have used it in my writing as I remember words that my father said, even though you know he passed away when I was 12, that uh, whatever I remember from him telling me is very valuable. So all of those are treasures and treasure memories that we can, if we keep them inside, nobody else is gonna know about them. But we have to document our history. That's why we write. And, we, and the best way to write it is either in a novel or a fiction story. But if you can write a poem, you can save a lot of time by condensing everything, that big chapter into a small poem, maybe a one page poem. It's very easy and we're gonna go through that. Also, the other two senses, um, for example, um, our eyes, our, our sight. I remember seeing things and uh, landscapes of when I travel across the U.S. 
and from other countries and other places. And if in a moment of solace, solace when I want to remember how beautiful Notre Dame was inside now that it's burned, I can go back to that. And of course, we have photos that can help us with the memory, but I can write about that feeling at that time. And um, also, for example, um, the um, feeling of uh, Pam is going to share with us something on later, but I, I'm very uh, fond to textures. When I go outside, walking at the dog, I like to touch the bark of the cedar trees and the bark of the maple trees and look at the leaves and see the composition of how, how, how did they look. So I use that also as a trigger point. And like I said, uh, Gatra showed us, I carry a moleskin book and I write in there all these little details that I see. Sometimes I take photos to be able to remind me of what I saw so I can write about it, whether it's uh, fauna, nature, people, um, the flowers, I love the flowers, they're also full of color. Imagine that. There's a metaphor that I like to share with you that I use, an example actually that I use with the kids and the students that I teach. I tell them that we are the human forest because on this earth, we all share the same sun, the same air, the same water, the same rain, the same soil, and all our roots are connected together where we can see. And that's why trees look different and we all look different because we are the human forest. See the connection there, I start associating with the, 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 the feeling of the perception of my eyes, my ears, my senses, my smell, my touch, to those ideas that I can condense later on into a piece of writing. When you start writing your lists, if you write the five senses, and then you can write what you remember, places, people, names, etc. then you can start elaborating on each one of those, a little line or two, and don't worry about grammar, uh, punctuation, none of that. All of that comes later. The idea is to free flow, free write, just open up and let it flow. And you'll see how you're gonna see a rainbow of ideas and different things that are be manifesting in your in your brain. For example, you can write about, uh, pretend that you went to a camping trip and then the map you were using was not correct. And you finally got there and it was raining. And then you had a hard time setting up the tent and it got cold at night. So finally you went to sleep so you can write about all those things. In the morning, you can write about the breakfast and the camp stories and the kids splashing and jumping in the river, making all of those things. So you're capturing all of those things, but we have to pay attention. If we don't pay attention, then everything goes like a movie right above us. But if we pay attention to those things, then we will be able to remember them easily if we write about them. Or like I said, you take a picture, maybe a short little video, and then you can write about it. That way you can go back to that moment. But it makes more impact when you're when we write about it and we share it with others instead of just watching a movie, because then it is you, your own perception, because you are manifesting that you actually were there to feel that and experience that, that moment uh, or activity, uh, whenever that, uh, whatever you, you might have been. Let me share with you a short little poem by a student. It's, uh, then the student's name is Juliet Gainsborough. She's from the East Coast. The title is Magenta. It's full of images. You're going to love it. Magenta is the taste of cherries on a cool evening, raspberries in a purple bowl, a sunset over the summer tide, the fragrance of a rose at dawn. Magenta is the grating of water on a rock, the winding motion of a waterfall, luscious strawberries that melt in the mouth, an aroma of cake and tea leaves at six. So you see, they're all memories, but they're all images. So with our mind's eye, we can see all of those. I can see the leaves. I can see the teacup. I can hear the waterfall running. That's the power of poetry. Now, let me share with you another poem of mine that I wrote. And in it comes a little bit of history, a little bit of culture. And I bring my mother and I bring uh, Mother Earth and all the elements around us. It's called Sinteotl, which is the name of the young god, goddess of corn. God of corn grown from earth, rain, and sun, kernels boil, nixtamal, grinding corn into dough, kneading, amasando, smoothing the dough, her soft hands soften the masa, grabbing a handful, left hand to right hand, begin to clap, 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 from one damp hand to the other, her fingers stiff with the slightest cup, and spring to the palm, clap and turn, clap and turn, lay it on the comal, Flip over to cook the other side. Aroma of fresh tortillas, fragrant and moist, 
My mother's hands cooked, her spirit evoked. When I cooked, remembering the sound of her hands, clap and turn, clap and turn, making tortillas, homegrown corn from earth, rain, and sun. You see? And now you start writing. Remember, I'm going to give you a little, please send us what you have written, any line or your uh, comments, whatever, to hashtag art transforms us. Now, one other thing that I need, I need to tell you is that um, if you start elaborating your, your writing, you can deeply go into e either of the senses and then combine them. But the more images that you put in there, the more effect you will have when other people read your poem, or if you read it in public, of course, you're going to put your emotion into it, and it's going to sound like a, a total, absolute piece of art that transforms us. It has transformed me over the years, and uh, here I am trying to do my best, uh, helping other uh, young students and uh, those uh, in detention as well. And um, it's been uh, has been very rewarding. So make your list of images, and it's not that difficult because we all have that. We are the only witnesses of our lives. So only we know what we have seen or heard or felt or remember, or maybe we wish that things were different in a, in a, in a different way. So the key thing is to walk, to, to, to listen to your heart and your mind and bleed on the page, bleed on the paper, and you'll see, you, you, you will surprise yourself. And that was my um, uh, best impression from working with the ladies at Casa Latina. They were all 25 female domestic workers. We talked about our jobs, we talked about our backgrounds, we talked about the other poets, we talked about how we could incorporate those experiences on the field, how people see us and treat us, etc., and how hard we go and strive to be, you know, honest and productive, etc. And then there was a discussion about um, that. Later on, some ladies wrote some poems, and they went me back. I have been able to go back because the things have been crazy, you know, with the COVID-19. The best experience is to sit with people face to face, so I can actually see what they're writing and uh, guide them through the process. And uh, one other thing I, I want to tell you, which is so you remember, okay. Pretend that, that you're going to write a poem, right? So you have an idea. So think you're going to make, pretend you're going to make cookies. You need the flour, you need the yeast, if you're going to make bread, but you need all your ingredients. So you get all your words together, and then you're going to put them in a bowl and start mixing them up. You, you're going to either use water or, or milk, whichever ingredient you use to make cookies. I don't make it. <laughs> but uh, so you do, you, you, you do the dough, etc., and then you start making the little balls, and you put them in your pan. Your oven is ready, right? Then you stick them in there, 350 degrees or however long. Then the, the alarm comes up, the cookies are ready. You let them you take them out, you let them sit, and then you enjoy them and share them with other people. That's how you can start with a poem. Just think of it. You need to gather the ingredients. Otherwise, it's not going to come just magically from the sky like rain. Oh, that's a nice metaphor, right? <laughs> um, but uh, mix your ingredients, get your ideas together. And then little by little, you're going to start elaborating. And don't worry, you know, at the beginning, it could be just a long piece of writing. That's okay. Because then you're going to reread that again and start cutting down the things that are not, not necessary. Unless you want to keep them, that's up entirely to you. But that's the best way that you can um, uh, do that. So please send us your uh, uh, poems or lines or questions at hashtag art transforms us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Raul. That was amazing. Um, that poem wow. with it just made me travel back to my childhood. I'm thinking about my abuelita, my grandmother, making arepas. That is a traditional dish in Venezuela. And the yeah. black clap, and I could see the lights coming from the window, her wet hands making yeah. the arepas. It was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mm. What do you think, Pam? That was beautiful. Thank you, Raul. Wow, I want some tortillas. And I want your mom's tortillas. <laughs> um, I loved what you said about how words and lines are the ingredients of a poem. Because um, a lot of times I used to think that, you know, these great, massive, beautiful poems should just come to me and flow out of my hand. Um, but that's not how it works for me. Lines and words come and they all go down on a piece of paper and then they come together like a sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so absolutely. I, that's, uh, 
So that's a process like putting together a, a, a puzzle. Yeah. A thousand piece puzzle. You yeah. know, it takes time to scratch your head, you go, my God, I can do this. But the more you try, once you end up achieving the final, uh, finishing the puzzle, you go, ah, this is so yeah. nice. You can actually see the whole picture. Same thing with the poem. Once it's done, you go, oh, beautiful. And yeah. you share it with other people, and it, 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 it does change people because, like I said earlier, uh, we only know our own experiences. And the best way to document them is by writing about it in a short little poem and sharing it with other people. People always say, you know that poem I wrote, it always reminds me, like I said, of my mother and all the poems that I read or, or, or read, uh, heard from other, other poets. I approach them and say, thank you so much. They really touched me. And I feel I should respond to that on my own way. And that's exactly what it does to us. So, Pam, uh, would you, do you have a, a poem you'd like to share with us today? I do. Well, this one, I have two. And um, this one is not quite a poem, but it's a partial paragraph out of a story I wrote. So okay. um, it's a story about hiking around Mount Rainier. So after the meteor showers, visions of the night sky, I enjoyed a feast of the senses while I climbed out of the valley. Early morning sun bathed the meadow in gold and my mind swelled with hope. I stopped to get water at a chattering creek edged by delicate yellow flowers and soft green mosses. Balanced on one foot on a rock in the middle of the creek, I leaned in to get, fill my water bottles. Early morning fragrance of lupin touched my breath. Grasses swayed in gentle breathe, breeze and marmots whistled in the distance. I embraced the peace of being alone and listened to silence behind the sound. Everything felt so still, even my mind. A fire lookout up at Fraser Pass watched over the valley and said everything was all right. I'd be all right. Well, thank you for sharing that. I get, I get the feeling of total peace. And also I can hear the sound of the water and you reaching out to touch those uh, uh, rocks and the one that you had in your hand, the one you described, as well as the aroma of those flowers that went by. So I, I, I see it, I feel it. As a, a serene place that I would like to be in. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, wanted to ask you, um, how's uh, creativity impacted your life? Uh, it's yeah. given me a life. Um, you said yesterday when we spoke a little bit, you said that, and what I remembered is that poem. Po rem Po writing poetry removes poison from your memories. And that struck me so much. I have memories, I mean, like we all do, some of them are traumatic and um, uh, scary. And writing about them um, removes some of the, uh, the po or actually removes a lot of the po poison. And um, you, you talked about and today, um, tears shed between the lines. Hmm. Yeah, I've shed a lot of tears and had a lot of cleansing um, from writing poetry. And being able to share my poetry has given me a voice. It's that's great because uh, we 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 all have something that are painful still in our hearts, like a, a deep splinter in there that. We don't take it out because we are afraid we're going to bleed to death. Yeah. That's for, for you take it out. Oh, what am I going to do if I don't go back into that place? Well, if it's painful, you don't want to go in there. It's like a snake bite. You need to, we need to extract the poison and get an, the anti venom, and hopefully we get better instead of uh, otherwise it's going to kill us. Because there are some traumas, speaking of trauma, because that's what happens, that when they're not dealt with, they is like, like cancer. They start eating within us until we become uh, bad or negative or die or commit things that we, you know, there are awful things that uh, that could happen to us. Yeah, and then sharing them. So writing about it expressively, and then sharing about it. It get, at least for me, it gives me a lot of confidence that 
you know, I'm not just my past. I'm not just the trauma or all the yuck experiences that I went through. I'm so much more than that. And people, you know, sometimes really like what I have to say, which never happened before. So I feel fortunate. Right. Yeah, it's true. And that's why by the process of writing, not only we allow people ourselves to, to, to express themselves, but also to bring validation that their feelings are true. This is not something you made up or somebody made up. If we experienced it, we know for sure. As I remember one thing my mom used to say when talking about, I know what I'm saying, is she used to say, I know that the mule is great because I have her hairs on my hand. See, <laughs> in other words, uh, I have proof that this is what it is. Same thing with uh, traumatic situations and memories, remembrances, maybe people we love and we always cherish. People have passed away these days or now missing our liberty or well, we have we still have a liberty, but we had to be careful to not hamper our health, right? By staying inside and obeying the law and obeying the rules and the recommendations that are given mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. So once again, folks, please send us uh, any lines, any information, any questions you may have at uh, hashtag art transforms us and um, keep, keep, keep on writing. And um, let's see. One yeah. thing, go ahead. Oh, so, I mean, we were talking about art transforms lives. My poetry over the time that I've been writing has, at first it was all about pain and suffering and deep pain that came out. And now it's becoming more light. And, you know, what I want my life to be like instead of just the not just, but the tragedy that it used to be, now it's bigger and brighter and. We well, see you're, you're proof that poetry saves people. I always say that. There's a book I have somewhere that says, poetry saved my life. And I said, oh, that's a lovely title because all poets can say that too. And yeah. uh, in my case, you know, the more I interact with the community out there, the young students, because their parents are really busy and sometimes on the weekends, they, they also have the kids have to go to work with them. Latino families are that way. So the parents may not have time to sit down with them. So, okay, so we're going to write poetry. And uh, number one, like uh, <laughs> I tell the kids that uh, those six letters, they're, they don't, they're, they, they're not, they're going to hurt you. They just happen to be arranged that way. So it sounds like poetry. I said, we're here to have fun. We're just going to go crazy. Mm -hmm. We're going to go write about whatever you want. Don't worry about anything. I'll help you later because I'm going to help you find the poem in your writing. And they like that because they feel no pressure. So no yeah. pleasure, no, sorry, no, no pressure, only pleasure. <laughs> but uh, that's what we're all about. The kids like to see that once that, once they're giving, once, once they are given the liberty to go crazy, to free, free fall or not necessarily, but, you know, to open up and, and uh, describe what they need to write about without any restrictions, they really, they really change. And then the smiles, like I said, in the end, did you like what you wrote? They smile back at me and oh, that's my gift. That's my yeah. pain. And I take it deep in my heart and then I save it and that's why I continue doing it. The more I do it, the better I'll, I'll feel about myself. And I, then hopefully, you know, the kids will benefit from that. I heard that as you were speaking, I remembered a line of a poet. I don't remember who said this, that poets are the megaphone for the people. And mm -hmm. we get in there and get to the real nectar of what's going on and so hmm. yeah, I remember another one just a casual comment by somebody that I met I don't remember where but um, he was asking me what do I do oh it was yes it was on the trip from Barcelona to San Sebastian on the train he asked me what do I do and I said uh, well I I'm retired now I don't work but I'd like to write poetry and I have book published he's he looks at me he says that's good and I said yeah well I, I like it he says uh, you know I always uh, trust poets I said, well, why? He says, because they always tell the truth. I said, hmm. oh. I said thank you. I hope I can abide by that and continue telling the truth the way we see things. Uh, we can do fiction, poetry too, you know, just imagine stories as well. But when it's true and honest and um, expressive, you know, people can see that right through, through um, the page and through the person that is speaking or reading or presenting at the moment. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, again, don't forget, make your lists of uh, the senses, start branching out, what do you remember, a place, a name, 
uh, flavor, a taste, a certain kind of food, music. Music always brings me back. Whenever I sit down to write about my childhood, I like to play music from from the 50s, from the 60s. Um, uh, generally, Perez Prado, um, uh, big band orchestra from the 40s. My father was uh, uh, Bracero back in the 40s. So all those songs from that time, I go back to them to listen, to see if I can capture a glimpse of what might have been in his mind at that time. So music, flavors, sounds, um, our pets, sense of touch, uh, what we see, look at the sky every morning, every, the sky changes every time, every day. The dew on the, on the leaves changes all the time. Some days are raining, other days it's not raining, and it just goes on like that. Um, so let's see. Um, how about if I, for the sake of time, let's see. How about if I share another poem of mine, unless you have another poem you would like to share, Pam? I do have another one. I would You can go first, or should I? Go ahead. Okay. Glasses, my eyes turned over 40. Um, you know rocks are alive, right? They're old friends. No, not ped, pet rocks with painted on smiles, but rocks that keep us planted, grounded on earth, not the celestial sky. They have a message. Remind us who we are. Boulders, the size of the world, weighed down by time. Crystallized flowers, eight pound petals. Fossilized trees, people of ancient times. Quartz, sandstone, no need to shine. Tears cascading, facets of granite. Smiles erupt from mountaintops. Rocks of the moonscape. Stones who teach, warn, tell us the truth. I used to look for the perfect rock, smooth, skipping stones, no cracks or holes, no specks of any kind. Rocks of who I thought I should be. But what I found were shards, rocks striated, red with crooked, crooked edges, stones that had a history, told a story. Rocks who held court in Stonehenge, tumbled in the sea, emerged from land, raped by you and me. Rocks beneath permafrost yet to be seen. What they told me was this, we are diamonds in the rough. Life on earth is as clear as mud. Beneath the crust of our masks, the shabby self image we try to hide, lies the lies a core without form, a being, a thought, so beautiful it has no need to shine. Very good. See, the attention for detail is what really brings out the, 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 the images in, in the poem. And of course, combining the words and, you know, later on, fixing it up the way we like it, whether it's the free verse or... But the, the, the idea of putting that on the paper and out of your memory because it's only it's your own experience. So that really brings out the essence of uh, you being there at that time, at that place, at that moment, and, and at that same stage of mind, which it was very relaxing and very peaceful, as I can see, because it, it takes us, that's another thing about poetry that poetry does. We sit down and read a book of poems. We're not reading the newspaper or watching the TV or listening to the radio. We're in a different realm with the poet reading the words and they, can uh, help us heal or maybe see the world in, in, in a different in a different way. Yeah. Um, but again, attention to detail. So for you out there doing your uh, list of uh, the senses and all the different aspects that you might remember, food, sounds, music, places, um, the day you uh, made something in the kitchen and it didn't taste good and how people reacted to it, or maybe you were afraid that something wasn't going to work, and then suddenly say, "Hey, this is wonderful." There you go. That's a poem. Yeah, mm -hmm. it had to. It doesn't have to be really long. Maybe you're free writing in the beginning because you're gathering all these materials. Like I use this example of the cookies, with your flour, and you all your ingredients. You have all these ideas. Then you're going to start condensing that into a nice form, and then you're going to make your cookies. You're going to bake them. You're going to eat them that way, and then share them with uh, with others. And um, you're going to make salsa. Aren't you going to make salsa? 
Yeah, maybe I should try to make it like the way my my mother used to make it. Maybe I should share that, that poem. It's only about a minute long. How's that? Okay. That's a, I love that poem. Okay, it's called Salsa Verde. Mother roasted tomatillos whole, serranos, onion, on comal stove top. Pungent air permeated swells of flavor. Tomatillos turned yellow with dark burn spots. Time for her hands to grind. Tomatillos, chiles with mortar. Salt chunks, garlic, clove. Fresh cilantro, crushing, crushing, blending, turning, mortar, churning, delicious salsa on molcajete, grinding stone. Steamy spicy smell tickled my nose. Spicy pleasure eaten on tortillas, tostadas, my tongue on fire. Oh man, give me more. I'll wash it down with tequila, gift from the gods. Mother salsa made on molcajete, grinding stone mm. so this was amazing thank you so much and Sam, your poems as well as raul but Sam, i wanted to tell you your poems are so powerful so what a great voice you got from the poetry so thank you so much for sharing those amazing poems so we have some questions from our friends from all over the world that are watching this event one of the questions is for raul raul do you write every day as part of your process I, I do. It might not be long verses, but I write uh, things that I see through the day. Uh, maybe something that came to my mind. So I just, I, whatever paper is around, I always carry a, a pen and my moleskin when I go outside or, or, or my camera, my phone, my phone to take photos. And then once I get those ideas together, then I sit down in the evening and I elaborate more on that. On Tuesday nights, my daughter and I, we sit down to, um, we call it our Tuesday night poetry. Tuesday night poetry, poetry night. So I grab books and I read a poem that's suitable for her to read, for me to read to her and she reads it back to me. Now we change our format. So we read it to her and she makes a list of those words and she reads the one I selected for her to read to me. And I do the same. I tell her, this is like, we're going out for, to catch butterflies because the words are come out so fast out of our mouth that we don't, we cannot keep up with the writing. So whatever we catch is the essence of what we cut our, uh, cut our attention. So then we write the poem and then we read it back to each other what we wrote, just very rough writing. And some very fine jewels have turned out of that. And eventually I'm gonna try to make a, a chapbook of my daughter's poems eventually, if she lets me, because I gotta get her permission. <laughs> That's beautiful, thank you for sharing that. Um, now Pam, we have a question for you. Is the writing or the sharing that helps? Both, both. I think they're intertwined. How is that process? Can you tell me a little bit? I think having a voice. It, so I write in a different way than I speak. I mean, I, it's easier for me to write than just come up with, you know, beautiful things to say. So, so I write differently than I speak. And then being able to express that outwardly is, is a gift it's um so i can't i can't separate them thank you thank you uh, and we have another question for raul raul how to create rhythm in poetry in poetry great question the best way to create a rhythm in your poetry is by if you're familiar with the process of alliteration Certain words end with the same sound, even though they might not be the same ex exact letters. Like, for example, you can um, uh, use, uh, and I saw the fawn that dawn where we were by the river, chasing, uh, um, we, went, we went fishing or um, skipping on the ground. The idea of, for the sound is to uh, use words like click and jump and knock and bang and um, swish, all of those words that uh, are already meaning uh, sound. I, I have a poem I titled Slam, which is the sound of that door when, uh, at the juvenile detention center. When I go in, that, that sound is, is stayed with, in me. So I remember that sound every time I go there and I think, 
is it that you stay in and you can't get out or now you're out and you came back in you know the best thing to do is to leave and not and hear that sound of the door behind me so sounds are very important because it also it, it, they um create um bring the the, the my, uh, mind's eye puts it in a different spectrum or other than just seeing the images you can also hear them with the same mind's eye that we have so using words that uh, have the sound already built into them thank you Raul. Mm -hmm. thank you so much we have another question from pa for pam how do you stay inspired to write during this difficult time time well, somebody early on asked me what would I regret not doing during during the stay at home order. And so I have a list of what I'd regret not doing and one of them is not writing. Um, Raul, it sounds like has a great disciplined practice. I don't. Um, so I get in, that's what I'd love to have and I just don't feel I'm disciplined in a lot of ways, not in writing. Um, so, but I do get motivated and get really excited and um, Path with Art classes help with that also because I have somebody to write for. I'm, I'm part of a group, I'm part of a community and we're all writing and um, and then we share with each other so that's the the key part uh, to, to to write with our fellow fellow writers because they always have an input do you think you want to use a different word or you know just a, a little advice mm -hmm. uh, once we progress when everybody all of us progress we will we, we start at different levels i started late so you know if i would start at when i was uh 20 i don't know where i would be now or maybe i wouldn't be doing it anymore i don't know but uh, I started at, at, I think, just at the right time. So it's given me uh, the opportunity to, to learn more along the way and to be able to share it with, uh, with others what I have uh, written and, you know, come, come up with. And definitely that's the, the best thing that we can do. Yeah. It's interesting, too, on, you know, having our Zoom classes, having our classes online. It's, I mean, this, is, this just came up for me right now so i have the note it's right here in my apartment and so i don't have to travel anywhere so i have time before the class and time after the class so i can ex expand the class as much as i want <laughs> to stay motivated and eager that's fantastic yeah. i have a last question for raul and this one is how do you decide whether you want to first write a poem in English or Spanish? Do the two languages bring different feelings? That's a good one. Absolutely. And if, uh, I remember something I heard on the radio. I'll tell you that first. It was um, an interview with a Pakistani uh, uh, born, um, sorry, her parents were from Pakistan and she was born in New York. She tried to learn Pakistani, but she couldn't really grasp on the, on, to the language. And uh, she comments that uh, um her mother used to tell her things especially her name and she always told her that she insisted that she needed to learn to the, the language of, of her parents but she just couldn't and then she decided to ask her mother mom why do you insist that i should re reply to you in pakistani and she says uh she says because if i tell you something in english it doesn't have the same flavor it doesn't have the same sentiment so that's a key word about using the languages now me, I learned English when I was five in Mexico City, going to an American school down there. And um, now that I've been writing uh, poetry, I like to convey, uh, first of all, they asked me the same question. So I replied that if it comes to me in English, because that's the language that I've been using every day, I write it in English. But if it is another memory from a distant place that comes to me in Spanish, then I write it in Spanish. But since I like bargains, I can translate my own poems and I get two for the price of one. So sometimes I mix English and Spanish. So I do the little code switch every now and then. And even at times I have used a third language. For example, Nahuatl in some of my writings. I have Nahuatl, Spanish, and English. And in other occasions, I have used a couple of words in uh, German just to make a point because of the language and the origin and the history of the German language. And without 
using certain words that uh, denote either a culture or, a, or, or an old, old memory. When I, in that case, um, uh, that point, it's, uh, it's about uh, the 9-11, it's about the destruction of the towers. And I write that um, uh, they're all made of the same material, you know, metal and glass uh, comes from the sand and the windows. We paint the, the windows, the walls, and then we destroy the same walls, same windows back down to the earth where they came from. And I don't know what's going on, but I guess our society is kind of crumbling in the same way. So the idea of using the different languages, you can either write in one language or the other or combine it. Because it, I tell the, the, the kids that I, that I teach that when you add words in a different language, it's like putting a little more pique, a little more salsa, a little more spiciness in, in your food. And then you eat it, it's oh, so flavorful. It just brings that, enhances the flavor. Of, of, of the writing or in, in the poem in this case or the food if we use a little more chili so Raul, thank you for that story and this is very interesting you have you know that we have two friends from pakistan that are joining this chat this morning so they speak so this was you know excellent time. okay so um thank you so much raul and pam so pam we have been asking our guests for a creative prompt to inspire us can you share one with us Sure. Um, so we're in a whole new cyber world, right? Where, um, and this might be an oxymoron, but since we're in this whole new world, I would challenge you to write a sensorial poem to the cyber world. Okay, that's a good one. So all of you that are watching right now, write a poem, paint it, whatever your creative practice is, and share that with us at hashtag Art Transform Us. So Raul Pan, thank you so much. It was amazing. I think that many people are going to be sending their poems. You are an inspiration with your stories and your process. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you all for uh, watching us, and we'll, we'll see each other down the road. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Gadra. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. During these difficult times, we need your help. I just want to tell you that during the best times, our students come to us to fight isolation, to connect to themselves and with community. As the pandemic started, we decided to reach out to our students with online classes. We provide tablets, internet access. We train our teaching artists and our student artists alike to be ready to adapt for the new format. This is why we need your support to keep our programs connected, our people connected and our programs running. And classes like poetry, choir, painting, acting, we really need your help. And that makes a huge difference in people's life and mental health, well-being. And thanks to a sponsor and a very generous sponsor, we have a match found for today's donation. Your donation is $250 and above will be doubled Donations of 1,000 and above will be tripled up to 25,000. Donate by clicking the link below or by texting Art Transforms to 44321. And I also want to thank all our sponsors, including our presenting sponsor, Business Air. Thank you so much. And I hope you, and I hope you join us next Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a very, very special tribute to our veterans, and next Saturday at 11 a.m. for a final episode, Drawing with Scissors with artist Celeste Koenig. So thank you so much for joining this morning. Be generous, donate, help us to keep these programs running. It was a pleasure to have you, all of you in our program today. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>